The water and the land are one. It, there's no division. It's just because it's a bit of water doesn't mean that our, our care for that same spot doesn't extend to the water. Well, when these ships came into Sydney Harbour with the first fleet and settled in the Circular Quay area, they decided on a spot where there was a, a stream. But what they did in settling there, they started polluting it. They started to throw their garbage in and all the excrement that came out of their animals landed in the, in the tank stream. And that was the first sign of polluting Sydney Harbour. And that continued all the way through to the 70s, when it became, 1970s, when it became obvious that, that the harbour was suffering, the harbour was being a, a dumping ground. So if you stopped those pollutants from going into the harbour, nature would take its course. And that is what's happened. As the industries have been shut down and moved elsewhere, and residences have taken their place, many steps through environmental laws, sound environmental laws have been put in place to try to stop those pollutants from entering into the harbour. You can envisage a catchment by bringing your hands together and tipping them so that the thumbs become the ridge lines and the pointing downwards towards the tips of the fingers is where the drainage is heading and the drainage is heading in a way where the water will flow to the harbour. Sydney Harbour is the largest natural harbour in the world and the largest urban catchment in Australia. So if you're that drop of water and you fall from the sky and you land in Manly, you land in Rose Bay and you start trickling down to the harbour, What's going to happen? I mean, you could pick up microplastics, you could pick up nutrients, you could pick up pesticides, and all of those things eventually make their way into the harbour. And so now what we realise is if we want to leave a better legacy for the future, if we want to say that it's still not good enough, we're a little bit better than we were before, we need to collaborate. So we need everyone to come together, and we need the councils to work with the state government, we need the citizens to work with the NGOs, and we all need to form a plan so that we know exactly what we're going to attack. So a coast and catchment management program provides a tremendous opportunity for coordination of projects. There are more than 30 organisations across the catchment doing great things, but it's ad hoc. We know that climate change and an extra one and a half million people over the next 20 years is going to put extra pressure on the harbour's health. And what we would like to see is better leadership and coordination reflected through this Coast and Catchment Management Program. We must be eternally vigilant to the, maintaining the quality and the beauty and the wonders of Sydney Harbour.